Good evening, everybody. I want to tell you how important it is for you to just take hope. I was most interested to get a call from the Texas Tribune to take part in something last weekend called, What Does the Tea Party Want? So in Austin, Texas, I want you to know that at the Trip Fest, they were very interested in what you're doing. And if you don't know Evan Smith, you should try the Texas Tribune out and look at some of Evan's interviews. I want to tell you how he started that section of the program. He said, Texas is no longer a simply a two-party state. Texas is about a third Democratic, about a third Republican, and about a third Tea Party. So before I tell you about the rules tonight, let me give you a quote that's on the back of my business card, and it came from a great patriot, Samuel Adams. If ever a time should come when vain and aspiring men shall possess the highest seats in government, our country will stand in need of its experienced patriots to prevent its ruin. That's what we're about. We've already had a couple of comments about substance, and yes, that's what we're about tonight. So I want to thank my Tea Party uh, friends at Clear Lake. The steering committee has given me the latitude to change the direction of the program if I deem it necessary. So we are absolutely going for substance tonight. This is not a drive-by. I don't drive all the way from Tyler, Texas and fight the Houston traffic as if I have nothing else to do to be with you here tonight, to do anything other than to bring you substance. The debate format is being called a modified Lincoln-Douglas style debate. In this modified style, I will ask a candidate a question. That candidate will have three minutes to respond. What's new about this format is that the challenger candidates will each have an opportunity to ask a question, and I do mean ask a question, not ramble on and make a speech, but ask a question and then the candidate will have another two minutes to answer that question. So Dale is going to be helping me make sure we stay on schedule with who gets to ask what. So I hope everybody understands the format tonight. And I want to tell the crowd here that nobody, and I mean nobody, knows what the questions are except for me and the Lord. Clear Lake Tea Party Steering Committee did not want to know what the questions were. They gave me the latitude to ask the questions, so here we go. We're going to start out tonight with a question, and by the way, I tried very hard not to lead the witness. Do you get my meaning? Embedded in every one of these questions will be some opportunities for debate. And if everybody's paying attention, they'll get the cue. <laughs> First question tonight is for Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst. In the 2014-2015 budget, there was a 200% increase in funding for film and music marketing. We're spending $95 million dollars on the film and music marketing business in Texas. There was an additional $57 million given to the Emerging Technology Fund, an additional $120 million to the Enterprise Fund. Governor Dewhurst, on what principle of liberty can you defend these expenditures of millions of dollars of taxpayer funds going to these types of enterprises. 
Thank you, Joanne, for the question. The Texas Enterprise Fund dates back into 2003. When I came into the legislature as a rookie lieutenant governor, I didn't want to pass the emerging technology, uh, the uh, Texas Enterprise Fund. But um, the, the majority of the members, the governor, were, were pushing this, you might remember it, Todd. And so we started with a small program. I wanted to make sure it was well run, and so I had an amendment to the legislation requiring that the, not only the governor, but the speaker and the lieutenant governor signed off on the, the program. This program has resulted in lending money to bring in jobs, and it's done under the concept, Joanne, of being able to make Texas competitive. I'm the only lifelong career business person elected statewide. I still have my business in Houston. And I understand business. I'm a free market guy, free market. And I am not a big fan of government programs. In fact, I, this year I fought against the 313 program whereby the uh, state is responsible for any deal that schools make to bring in companies. So I wanted to make sure that that didn't go forward and, and, and the amount was as low as possible. So on the Texas Enterprise Fund and the Emerging Technology Fund, some of that funding, Joanne, was lapsed balances that was moved forward. But again, this is an attempt by the state so we can keep ourselves competitive against other states. There is not a provision in the Texas Constitution or the U.S. Constitution for it. But it's a program that has been pushed and most states have it. On the 200% increase in the film marketing, um, that is, those funds are largely contingent on balances and for growth in, in uh, that particular program uh, so that it's not costing the state. I'm a believer in having the lowest budget possible. That's why over the last 10 years, when you look at our budget, it has declined 11% below inflation and population growth. I'm proud of the fact that I've cut taxes 54 times for a total of almost $16 billion. I'm glad of the fact that I have cut and consolidated state agencies some 57 times. I'm glad of the fact that I've kept spending low Ever since I've come into the state of Texas as Lieutenant Governor, our state's been on a roll because I've focused on doing the least possible um, time. and providing the services for, for the people of Texas. Okay, so let me get back to the, to the question. Um, wh on what principle of liberty, Governor Dewhurst, on what principle of liberty then, you just said, that there is no provision in the United States Constitution for this type of spending by the federal government. There's no provision in the state constitution that calls this type of spending a core function of state government. So on what principle of liberty do you rest your support of these? I am... The principle, Joanne, is that the core principle is to protect the good of the state of Texas, the well-being of the people of Texas, to make sure that we have enough revenues in the state to pay for our public schools. We have an obligation to pay for our public schools. We have an obligation to pay for our public universities. We have an obligation to pay for our road building. We have an obligation to pay our Medicaid. And in order to keep this state growing, these programs, and I am not a large supporter of these programs, but these programs are intended to make the state of Texas competitive against other states so that at least we have a seat at the table. We're competitive to bring in companies that will locate here, invest, and create jobs. That's what I've been working on over the last 10 years, to create the best business climate in the country right here in Texas to make it irresistible for companies to come in and invest. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Rivera, when I do a redirect on a candidate, give them 30 seconds, please. Thank you. Okay, and 
I'm sorry, Dale, I can't read that. Mr. Staples, would you please ask your question to Governor Dewhurst? The Emerging Technology Fund and the Enterprise Fund has received criticisms from taxpayers who feel like their tax dollars are being used to compete against them, and they're the ones paying the tax dollars to begin with. Um, as a result of that, I've, I've come to believe that government does not need to be in the business of picking winners and losers through this program. I think our better approach would be to lower our business tax to where that is the welcoming format to bring jobs into Texas so they know they're going to be treated fairly when they get here. And in light of that, wouldn't it be more fair rather than putting these funds up that ends up picking winners and losers to phase those out, lower our business tax, and to make a better business environment altogether. Well, Commissioner, first of all, as you know perfectly well, those programs don't pick winners and losers. And you were supportive of the program when it was put into place uh, and helped vote for it back in 2003. The, the way I see it is that this is a program in which the federal government should have no program like Solyndra. Uh, there is no reason for the federal government to be picking winners and losers. In this program, it is a competitive grant, and the, the companies that will come in and invest and create jobs, the state makes money on that, on the, on, on the enterprise fund, that the state makes money, and, and the amount of the grant is calculated on how many jobs are made and a guarantee by the company. So the state makes money on it. It's, a, it's an investment. On the, inter, on the technology fund, and, and I don't, uh, I'm not trying to be an apologist for either one of these. You're asking me a question and I'm answering. But on the uh, technology fund, these are applications uh, to bring in technology and to be able to create new jobs here in the state. Mr. Patterson. I have a procedural question. I feel like in the class I refer to you as Mrs. Fleming or Joanne. It, it, you know what, Mr. Patterson? Uh, Joanne or Mrs. Fleming is probably the nicest thing I get called sometimes. So, you, okay. Uh, you make yourself feel comfortable. Either way will be fine with me. Well, uh, Governor Dewhurst, uh, I mean, the question was posed on the, the uh, uh, Economic Emerging Technology Fund and those, but there's, th those are chunk change when you look at some of the other things we do with federal, with state dollars. And I would like to submit that the Major Events Trust Fund, which committed a quarter of a billion dollars, unlawfully, I might add, for the Formula One track for $25 million a year for 10 years for the licensing fee to put a racetrack in Austin. Not only did they do a quarter billion forward commitment of future revenues that our controller made that commitment, not only that, they bought a jumbotron for the uh, stadium in Dallas. They bought a jumbotron for the stadium here. Mr. Patterson, uh, get, I'm sorry, but get to your question. Your time is up for asking the question. Okay. So, so, so get to your you point agree? and ask him the question. The question is, do you not think that even uh, that the major events trust fund is a more egregious waste of taxpayer dollars than some of the things that are mentioned, at least in dollar amount? Commissioner Patterson, I totally agree. I totally agree. The, the enterprise fund and the, uh, was designed to bring in companies and jobs that will invest and where people will create investments, you'll have additional revenue from sales tax so we can pay the basic functions of government, our public schools, our universities, um, and our road building, etc. Um, but the major events fund has been, I think, misused. Um, the Jumbotron at the stadiums is a ridiculous example of that. And I couldn't understand it when I first saw it, and I still don't understand it. Senator Patrick, you got a question? I do, thank you. Um, Governor, we're talking about the budget. Why the Legislative Budget Board, as I said in my opening remarks, helps shape the budget through the interim period until we get to session in January. It's four members plus yourself from the Senate. 
you've had two liberal Democrats on that budget board committee that helped shape the budget. We have 19 Republicans in the Senate, 13 that I would classify as strong conservatives. They are not on that committee. Why are you appointing liberal Democrats to help shape the budget for 18 months before we get there while good conservatives sit on the sidelines? Because, Senator, I'm not. I'm not. They, the budget is shaped by my office working with the chairman of Senate Finance, Tommy Williams, who's a strong conservative from Montgomery County. It's shaped by, by the people that, that both Senator Williams and I have confidence in who are conservatives. Um, our conservatives, Jane Nelson, our conservatives, um, yourself, uh, I put you on Senate Finance. Yeah. Our I'm talking about the budget board. I'm talking about the legislative the budget, budget board. The budget board, Senator, did not meet during the interim. So the they budget, didn't do their job. The budget board met at the end of the at the at the end of the year to set met once to set the statutory and required budget um, number on what our growth would be. So you take full credit for a budget that every Democrat praised and voted for, and four conservative Republicans like myself voted against. You take full Senator, credit. Senator, I take credit for a budget that was under inflation and population growth. I take credit for a budget that over the last 10 years is 11% below inflation and population growth. Um, I don't take credit for the fact that $3.4 billion of new money was put into the budget on public education that you're, on your insistence and on the Democrats' insistence. I know you're upset that there was two programs for about $100 million that didn't go in that were favored of your projects. But at the end of the day, our budgets, as you look over 10 years and for this year, for this biennium, are under inflation and population growth. Again, every Democrat 